to a new video. Hope you're all doing really well this week. Albert's with me at the moment, sitting on my shopping bag. He has a thing about bags, boxes, just likes to sit on them. Anyway, Albert's doing very well this week. I hope you're doing very well this week and have had a good and productive week. I've had a slightly worrying week, a very busy week, a productive week, and all in all, it's actually gone quite quick. <laughs> but anyway, I shall just get into this week's video. Bit of an update about Nancy. She has been very, very poorly, but I'll give you a full update on her. The kitchen worktops have been done. I'm really, really pleased with them. Really pleased with them, but there was a little bit of an issue, but we got round it. And I've been to B&M, had a little bit of a haul, only a little one because my shopping companion, Nancy, has not been able to get out with me this week. But I'm hoping after this weekend, things are gonna be much better and I can get out and about a little bit more. So I've been a little bit restricted this week and just sort of stayed home and looked after mom and I've also gone back to work and all those kind of things. But anyway, there is a video for you and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Finally, the kitchen got finished this week with the new worktops that I had ordered. So once again, I had to clear the kitchen out, but not every cupboard, just the work surfaces and a couple of corner cupboards. And these worktops weren't too bad, but they're 20 years old. And if you look at the edges there, you'll see they're like a peachy colour, which is the same colour that the units were before I had them spray painted a couple of weeks ago. So it didn't really match and they are a bit worn and the wood is a little bit rotten around the sink as well. So I went for this gloss black it's called Taurus and it's from Wix but what you will notice is when the carpenter was doing this the upstands are actually horizontal and not vertical but unfortunately it's because when he took the old worktops off it turned out that the units were all in different places which meant that the worktops that were originally on had not been put on correctly to size so we were a little bit short this worktop doesn't come in a different size so we had to improvise it was either move the entire kitchen every single cupboard into a different place or use the upstands horizontally and I think it looks fine it's just made a little shelf round the edges which I can totally work with it saved me another day's labour and a lot of hard work in the kitchen and I actually am really really pleased with the final result the black work tops has made the lovely farrow and ball paint which is old school white on the cupboards really pop out I've just done a little trip to B&M, or bloody marvellous as Nancy would call it, and I've got a little haul to show you, but it is only a little one. But I bought some fairly interesting things, I thought, today. Excuse the hair, it's horrific, I know, but I am going to the hairdressers later on this afternoon. <laughs> Thank the Lord, I'm a couple of weeks out of sync with having my hair done because of having the old dreaded Covid. But um, that's all in the past now, fortunately. So yeah, I'm going to the hairdressers later, but I've just ran into... BNM. And the first thing I'm going to show you is something really interesting. And I haven't actually bought it for me, I have bought it for Nancy. But I'm not going to give it to her just yet. But when the time is right, and when I feel that this is going to be of some use, I will give it to her. But it's really good. And it's huge. Look at this. It is a chalkboard wall sticker. So you can stick this, it's self-adhesive, you could stick this anywhere. On a wall, over tiles, on a kitchen cupboard, you could put it on the fridge. It's massive, but it is a chalkboard on a sticker. I thought that was great. It comes with four chalks as well, but you can obviously pick up chalk anywhere and everywhere. But because it's so big, if there's something she needs to remember that's quite significant, I can write it on there and she's just not gonna miss it. Wherever she is in the house and wherever we decide to put that, if it's, you know, remember, Polly's coming today at 11 o'clock or shopping with Polly today or something like that. 
we can put it nice and big for her where she's going to be able to see that. I don't think she needs it at the moment, not just at the moment. When I saw it, I thought that's really good, particularly because of the size of it. But the fact that it's self-adhesive and I don't have to sort of bother about sort of fixing it to the wall, as it were, and we can choose where she wants to have it. I thought that was really good. It was only 3 99 Absolutely brilliant. I think you can get a different one as well. You can get this one, if you can see that, which is called This Week. So this one's split into days of the week where you can put things on. But I keep her diary and <clears throat> I keep a, a calendar for her. So that would be too complicated for her to follow each day, especially if she lost track of the day. But with this, it can be something simple as seeing Polly at 11 o'clock and then I can rub it off the board and then just put something else down. I can even use it at her house as well. So if I need to remember something I need to buy for her, I could use it as a, a big shopping list or something like that. But I really thought that was an excellent idea for her. 3 99 absolutely fab. Love that. And then I got um, a couple of householdy things, some boring things, but I got some bleach, but this one's premium pink bleach. So it colours your loo pink. And I kind of fancied that. <laughs> I don't know why, I just haven't tried that one before. And that was only 70p, so that was good. Um, I've got visitors this weekend and they're coming to stay over on a Saturday night. So I'm hoping to get the house a little bit fresh and clean. <clears throat> and they're going to be staying in, well, it's the guest bedroom, but it's also Adam's bedroom when he's home. It's, it's actually Adam's bedroom, what am I saying? But it's also used as a guest bedroom at the times that Adam isn't here, because obviously he's at university, which is most of the year that he's not here. But whenever I have guests in there, I like to give it a, a good freshen up and a clean. Although it's not used, it doesn't get particularly dirty. But I've put all the fresh linen on ready, <clears throat> and I've hoovered it and what have you. But I'm gonna hoover it again because I've bought some carpet fresh, some 1001 carpet fresh in Feel Calm. So this is a quick drying foam that you put over your carpet after you've vacuumed it and it smells lovely and I thought that's quite welcoming and fresh and clean when you've got guests isn't it so <clears throat> I do be a bit careful with this though because I'm not sure it's particularly pet friendly I don't know I need to read up on that but I'm not going to put it anywhere where the cats are going to go anyway so that should be okay um, I picked up this for £2, which is an extra long drain grime <laughs> removing brush. How delightful. But we need it. We need it. Both with my long hair and Grace, who's got even longer hair than me, those plug holes are something else at times. And I'm forever, forever doing Grace's bath and pulling out masses and masses of hair. And I don't think I'm getting it all because there can't be that much every time that she has a shower and washes her hair. So I thought it was about time those plugs had a really good clean. So I found this, it's 1.5 meters long and super flexible. So it should get round all the bends and everything. So when I open that and use it, I shall show you. But it's only two pound. So there we go, unclogs and cleans those drains. We need that. I also got a couple of new super soft microfiber dusters and cleaning cloths. They were £2 for two. They're the Addis range. They do have others, but these are super, super soft. And I found with the new worktops, and because they're shiny, they're not difficult to clean, but they do need to sort of be kept shined up, if that makes sense. And I find that these kind of cloths are the, the ones that do the job. If you use something that's a little bit more abrasive or a cheaper cloth, it, you get lots of smears and what have you. So I do prefer to wipe the kitchen worktops down with a microfiber cleaning cloth. These are called dusters, but you can use them wet or dry. And um, it's ideal for all surfaces. You can use them dry and use them on your wood and use them to polish with as a duster, or you can use them on those shiny kitchen worktops. Works a treat. Picked up some more mini eggs to go in my bunny jar, filling it up for Easter, although they don't last very long in my house, but I've got four packets of those, so that should fill the jar. And then a couple of little kitchen accessory items. Now we've got the black work tops, which I'm very happy with. Treated myself to two accessories in black. First of all, a candle. It's not like me, is it? A candle, which was only five pound, and this is called Unwind. And it is Liang Liang Rose 
and patchouli, my kind of sense really. And it's not too overpowering. Considering it's got patchouli in, rather than being overly woody, it's actually quite fresh. And I like that. I really like that, but I thought I'd buy it in black to match the work tops. Not quite sure where it's going yet. It might go on the windowsill, but I haven't quite figured that out because I might put this one on the windowsill. I got a new black wax melt holder. That's right, isn't it? It's a wax melt holder. I had a blank then for a minute. This was three pound. Yes, it's an oil burner. So your tea light goes in there, your wax or your oil goes on there and it scents the house again in black. So it could be that I use one or the other. It could be that I use both. I might swap them around, have one in the kitchen for a bit and then the other, but we shall see. But two black candle scented items for the kitchen. So a new little treat for the kitchen worktops. That's all I got in B&M actually today. And <clears throat> it's a bit of a shame Nancy wasn't with me. She's not quite there yet for going out, but this last 24 hours, I've seen quite an improvement in her. So hopefully by the weekend, we can get her out and about, even if it's just for a little bit of fresh air or perhaps just to one shop. But that's what I picked up in B&M today. So I'm going to go and fill up the mini egg jar before I open the packet and just eat them all. Go and dunk me drains, go and pink me loo, and go and freshen me carpet and dust me work tops. dark in here, isn't it? Oh, my seatbelt's stuck. Why is that stuck? What? Oh, it's all got twisted up. <laughs> it's a bit dark because it's actually quarter to six in the evening. Well, I mean, it's not dark. It's still, still light outside, but it makes it look a bit darker in the car and it's very rainy. Having a lot of this uh, wet stuff still at the moment not feeling like spring yet although the temperature's a lot better today it's about 15 degrees so it's not cold particularly anyway i just sort of have a little chat with you on my way to the hairdressers hoorah i really need it and um i'm completely fine now from covid but i'm really tired and i noticed this Last time I had COVID, I was really fatigued for about six or seven weeks. It might have been longer actually, afterwards. Um, and it's Thursday today, so I'm not in work on a Thursday. I went back to work yesterday, that was my first day back. And um, I've had to have a little sleep this afternoon. <laughs> So, but every time I sit on the sofa, if I just decide to have a little sit down, you know, and just think, oh, I just have 10 minutes, I will fall asleep. So it's, it's a horrible virus, isn't it? It really knocks you about. And poor old Nancy, still not going out. But she's improving a little bit every day. And today's the first day that I think I've stopped really worrying about her because we've had a couple of really worrying moments um, when she's been struggling to breathe. One occasion took us up to the doctor and the second occasion I actually had to call for an ambulance. But I'll talk to you about that a moment on the bed because that was a bit of a, a bit of a difficult one. Um, but she's, she's at home and she's resting but the doctor that saw her for Covid also 
protect your stomach um, but even so you can still get things like stomach ulcers and what have you with long-term use of naproxen it's quite a nasty drug he was mortified that someone had put mom on this drug he said asking for trouble get her off it so she's off that but it's made her knee worse so she's just got some gel some ibuprof ibuprofen gel to rub on her knee but it's not as effective as the naproxen so her mobility is practically non-existent but she's still great she's still great for her age and we've just got to get her through this last little blip of this illness and it's such a as she would say it's such a bugger this covid and it is especially when you're 93 um so yes it's not been the best week but we're starting to get back into a routine a little bit back to normal as so i went back to work yesterday i'm able to get the hairdressers but normally i go to the hairdressers on a thursday morning which couldn't get me in this week on a thursday morning so i've had to go for the six o'clock in the evening appointment because they do a late night on a thursday so I've just eaten a biscuit because I'm starving because <laughs> this would actually be my tea time so I'm going to make dinner when I get home later because Grace is working till late anyway so we'll just have to eat late tonight so it's all a bit muddled up this week but we're getting there we are getting there we just need it to stop raining we want the sun to come out the spring flowers to start blooming and soon it'll be Easter as well anyway I'm going to I'm only a couple of minutes away from the hairdressers I don't live too far away so I'm gonna go and do that now and then I'll come back to you hopefully without me being grey roots very shortly I'm just back from the hairdressers so I'm the right colour but it's um it's still wet at the moment because it's already 25 to 9 in the evening so I thought it was about time the hairdresser went home so I said don't worry I'll dry it at home so I'm just making some tuna pasta bake this is the tuna pasta -y bit going on and then it'll go in there and it'll go in the oven so a bit of a late tea tonight but hair is done have my tea watch a bit of telly dry my hair go to bed that's it day done so here we are having our moment on the bed and firstly, I'll give you a Nancy update. And that is that she is slowly getting there. Thank goodness. It is slow, though. She has been really poorly with COVID, particularly breathlessness and a very bad cough. The cold symptoms are going a little bit now, but she's still quite out of breath. So getting out and about has been pretty non-existent this week. It's now Friday evening. I'm hoping to get her out just for a little bit tomorrow. She wants to go to the supermarket. I'll make sure that she's negative. I think she'll probably test negative now, but she's really, really struggled and it's really knocked her about something terrible. Um, I've been really worried about her at certain moments throughout the past week. And um, I did have to call an ambulance one night and well, it was one afternoon and she rang me and said, I'm really not good and I can't breathe. So I brought her around to my house here and we rang the doctor who said, put the phone down, ring 999, which we did. But unfortunately, there is a massive delay, massive wait time for ambulance service. They asked me if I could take her to hospital, which I said I could. But she really didn't want to go. But she also felt like she wanted to be assessed. So... I said, look, we'll wait for the ambulance. I think she'd be more comfortable here and assessed by a paramedic here. If things change dramatically, I'll get her in the car and I'll come up to A&E. Anyway, to cut a very long story short, she didn't get any worse. She didn't really get much better, but she, I think she panicked as well, which was also affecting her breathing. So once she was with me here, she calmed down, but she didn't eat and she hadn't eaten for about three days at that point. Anyway, we waited and waited and waited and it was a good sort of four or five hours when I decided to ring the ambulance service and see if they could give me a, an update. And they said they couldn't. They were just incredibly busy 
if I went to A&E, I'd probably have an eight to nine hour wait there. So I thought, well, I'd rather her be sitting waiting in my house than sitting waiting in A&E, quite frankly. So we started to wait a little bit longer. And then she said, you know what? I'm so tired. I just want to go home and go to sleep. So I cancelled the ambulance. I was very worried, but she hadn't got any worse in those hours she was with me. So we popped her into bed and I said, look, don't hesitate in the night. If you need me, ring me. Otherwise, I'll be ringing you first thing in the morning and see how we get on. Anyway, she didn't ring in the night, but I didn't sleep, <laughs> naturally, worrying about her. And then I spoke to her the next morning and it was the same story, really. No worse, but not really any better. So we, it's a, it's a bit of a funny one, but I thought, OK, let's give it another day and see how we go. And basically what's happened is she has got no worse and she's only got marginally better and the only other thing that's concerning me is she's come out in these what look like purple bruises. There's quite a big one on her wrist here and one has developed on her hand, but it looks like, um, like blood spots almost. And I don't really know what that is apart from it could be a bit of a circulation problem. So I'm very, very much keeping my eye on her. I'm going to see how the weekend goes. If I feel she needs another GP visit next week, a bit of a review, we should do that. But as it stands at the moment, I think it's just a slow process. I, she hasn't had COVID before and I think it's it's really knocked her about. And But she's had five vaccines, thank the Lord, really. This could have been in, even more different, couldn't it? If she hadn't, who knows? Um, so we're just keeping our fingers crossed. But she's, she's OK. She's OK. And as I say, certainly not got any worse. So keeping everything crossed for Nancy, a.k.a. Mum, and hopefully I can get her out and about very, very soon and get her back on the channel because she said that she's very grateful for everybody's warm wishes and she loves sort of making an appearance. So that's all good. I'm very pleased with the kitchen, but we did have a bit of a oh no moment um, when the carpenter, he actually measured and cut the worktop, the new worktops, and then started to remove the old ones. And to explain the video a little bit better that you saw earlier, um, the worktop that was over the kitchen sink area, when that came off, he then noticed that the actual kitchen worktops were a huge, there was a huge gap from back of the worktop to the actual wall, but that wasn't on the other cupboards around the kitchen. And it was like, crikey. That's a bodge job. And those worktops and that kitchen has been in since the house was built. So it was obviously done by the builders for whatever reason. We can't see a reason. It was nothing to do with the plumbing under the sink, although that isn't, hasn't been done great. It, it wasn't affecting that area and we couldn't make head or tail of it. So basically what would have happened is the new worktop would have gone on but the cupboards would have been forward by a huge gap. So if we bought the worktop in line with the fronts of the cupboards, we then had a gap at the back and that worktop doesn't come in a bigger width. So it was like, oh God, what are we gonna do? And the only thing he could think of was to change, was to push the worktops back, sorry, <laughs> push the cupboards back so that the worktop would fit, but it would then mean altering all the other cupboards throughout the rest of the kitchen the same so that those worktops would fit. And we kind of went, oh my goodness, this is going to turn into a massive job and a very expensive job. And I might as well have just had a new kitchen. So we all kind of, you know, scratched our heads for a bit. And it was Paul, genius, who said, well, the upstands that were meant to go vertically across the back, because we thought when the old worktops came off, it would crack the tiles. So by having the upstand, you can actually hide any cracked tiles. I thought, I don't want to spend money on new tiles. I might paint them, haven't decided yet, might not. And so I'd bought the upstands and then Paul said, well, can't we use the upstands horizontally and have them at the back of the worktop to, to wedge that gap basically. And that way we've only got a, we're only worried about the sink area. We're not worried about the rest of the kitchen we haven't got to move anything and it would mean that this whole process would take a day and not two or three days or however long it was going to take and cost a lot of money carpenter said yeah i can do that and he said it just depends whether you want it to look like that and i said well i think that's fine really because this whole redoing the kitchen is just a freshen up really i'm trying to do it 
on a budget, couldn't afford a brand new kitchen, didn't really want a brand new kitchen. And all in all, with the spray paint and the worktops and the fitting, I've done the whole thing for under £1,500. Now, I could have done it for even less if I painted it myself, but I don't have the time at all. And I certainly wouldn't have done it as well as Spray, spray Works did the, did the spray paint of the, of the units and the cupboards. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. And I think it's really reasonably priced, really, actually, because it basically does now look like a completely fresh new kitchen which is wonderful. So we went with Paul's idea and the carpenter said, yeah, I can do that, but it just depends whether you want it to look like that. And I said, well, you know what? I can work with that. I can, it's a little, it's created a little shelf, if you like, at the back of the units. And it just means that everything's come forward a bit. So I've lost a bit of worktop space, but by having a bit of a declutter as well and getting rid of some of the things on the worktop, and I still need to do that a little bit. I'm not 100% going to have it the way it is now. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's worked. I was like, thank you, Paul, genius. That's absolutely great. So we did that. And the few moment was phew, fine then. So we sorted that out. That's all good. That's all good. And fortunately, I seem to have got over my illness, my COVID, relatively quickly. I am feeling quite bright and feeling quite good. Uh, a little bit tired, that's to be expected. I am off to the doctors next week for another blood test for um, testing my vitamin B12 levels because of the fatigue I've had recently, but I still think it's all menopausal, but we're covering everything. Other blood tests came back last week I think it was and they're all fine but my iron is low even though I'm on iron tablets so I think that's what's made them decide to have me checked for vitamin b12 I think it is um so we're going to do that and uh, and that's it really <laughs> I'm back at work and tired but you know all things are good. All things are good. Anyway, I hope you've all had a really good week. And we have also had this week some new subscribers. So hello and welcome to the channel if you are new. And if you're not new, thank you for coming back as always. It's lovely to see you. I do enjoy our little chats and what have you. And again, I did mention at the start of the year, and I think I mentioned around Vlogmas time as well, that when the channel gets to 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. I do like doing a giveaway. So I'm going to do a giveaway when we get to 2,000 subscribers. So if you haven't yet subscribed, but you have tuned in a few times, do hit that subscribe button and you will be notified of the videos that I do, which at the moment is every Sunday morning. So until next Sunday, stay safe, stay in the boat and keep doing all things good. And I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye.